it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And if you are doing clear aligners, be it Invisalign, Clear Correct, Spark, Reveal, any of these ones actually have attachments. Sometimes attachments break. And it seems like it's frustrating for a lot of y'all. So let's go over maybe what happened. And I can't really answer that question. So you have to play a little bit detective in order to know what happened. So the first question I always ask is when did the breakage happen? So first question is when? So we always t tell the patients in our offices that if an attachment attachment is a handle right that we're going to glue on the tooth if it breaks they need to give us a call immediately when it happens you know um not a week or two later because sometimes we do something sometimes we don't so if it happens within 24 hours of when you put it on guess whose fault that is that would be the doctor's fault doctor and team somebody made a boo-boo in putting it on if it happens after 24 hours, it gets a little more complicated in terms of what happens. So let's just do the 24 hour thing. So if a patient doesn't give us a call within 24 hours, as a matter of fact, it's actually a really great housekeeping idea to after delivery of Invisalign to have the doctor or a team member call the patient within 24 hours and document, hey, you know, and I love the idea of even counting the attachments at delivery. Hey, you have 12 attachments, you have six attachments, four uppers, four lowers. I want you to count them, you know, once a week, you know, before every... Um, attachment, uh, I mean, a liner change to make sure they're all there, you know, feel them with your fingers to make sure they're also not broken. So that's a great idea if the patients are familiar with how many attachments they have and the location of the attachments and to get the patients in practice to count their attachments before each aligner change. So if you do that, and if you do the housekeeping call, um, housekeeping call or whatever you want to call it, um, welcome call, check-in call, home care call, um, 24 to, I would do a little more than 24 hours after delivery. Let the patient know you're going to be calling them, asking them if anything's broken. If the answer is no, all my attachments are there, nothing's broken. Well, then this issue has passed. And then if any future breakage happens, it's probably not the doctor's fault, but um, we'll kind of go through all this anyways. If it happens within 24 hours, y'all made an oopsie. You got to learn how to do your edge prime bond better basically. And of course, if you're bonding to a crown, it can't be a gold crown. It has to be a porcelain crown. You have to use a different type of edge. So it um, could be your light cure unit. It could just be isolation. I mean, you guys, this is like dentistry 101. I shouldn't have to tell you how to edge prime. Okay. Uh, I have a lot of videos on bonding brackets and it's the same thing. So you can watch all those videos within my channel. Let's go to the more complex one, which is breakage that happens 24 hours after. Now, remember, an attachment is kind of like a braces in that there's something that can break off. So there are some dietary restrictions. I mean, most of the time patients don't have an issue. And if you're like my daughter, if, she, if she's supposed to eat something that could break an attachment, she just leaves her aligners in and eats it. So that way no attachments break like nuts or a sticky candy bar or something super crunchy. Um, Takis, you know, you get the idea. Eat it with your aligner in. You know, you can still take it out, brush, floss, brush the aligner, soak the aligner, put it back in. So then you won't worry about breaking attachments. But so that's an easy fix. Um, so it could be that. So I always recommend if it happens more than one day after, have the patient take a photo of their aligner and their tooth. And I want to I basically want to look at the attachment up close up and see is if the attachment broke, is it half broken or was it a clean break all the way off? Is there any residual glue left on the tooth? This is the big question. If the residual glue is left on the tooth, um, there's there's no clean break. There's definitely something on there. Well, then it wasn't your isolation. It was luckily something that they it was either an interference. And that's where we have to look at the clean check and see if there was an interference. And maybe when they take the aligners out and they're eating, maybe they're they're banging on it, you know, um, or they're just not wearing their aligners all the time. Attachments can't break as long as aligners are in. So that's a really quick fix. I mean, if there's interference, just wear them 24 seven, eat with them in and then there shouldn't be a problem. So, you know, until you kind of pass that hurdle, usually as the bite starts to level out and stuff, then that's not going to be happening. It just might be a temporary, temporary interference. So, um, but that's why we need to see where the adhesive is on the tooth or if it was a clean break. It could still be a clean break off, even if it was dieta interference. And that's why I don't really know. But um, obviously looking at the clean check, looking at the bite, checking occlusion with articulating paper in office um, can give you a lot of information. So obviously... If this keeps if this keeps happening, y'all, that's a bar, that's a problem. You guys got to fix this. If it's just a temporary issue with the bite, 
tell the patient to eat with it in until we can pass that over. If it's the patient's diet, then they need to start eating with the aligners in, like I said, or give them a food list and they just have to start restricting their diet on crunchy foods. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's that's the uh, that's how what happens when attachments break. It's not the worst thing in the world. It definitely happens. Just a matter of patient management. And this is why it's fantastic to have some type of virtual um, check-in software, whether you're using the new Invisalign virtual with AI, you're using, um, in-hand dental, you're using dental monitoring. I think there's a bunch of other ones out there. I'm not going to mention them all. Those are the three I'm familiar with. They're all great. So, um, obviously Invisalign virtual, I think is free except for those $3 retractors. Um, in-hand is nice. I mean, that's probably my favorite because it's cost effective. It's not crazy expensive at all. It's very affordable. Um, you get your own dashboard. It can sync with basically anything. You can use any aligner company. You can use multiple aligner companies. You can do braces. You can do phase one. You can do everything. You can use it for retention, um, even if you're not doing Vivera. So, I mean, there's definitely, I think, a lot of benefits to having an independent company um, and not having... I always don't love the idea of Invisalign getting all the data and access to my patients, you know, because after, I don't know, I, I just, I don't love that because then they kind of feel like it's there. I don't know, but I don't want to get into that, but all right. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks.